ignition sequence has started. Six, five, four. April 11th, 1970, Apollo 13 astronauts Commander Jim Lovell, Fred Hayes, and Jack Swigart embarked on what was supposed to be an incredible mission to the lunar surface. They would have been the third group of astronauts to stand and walk on the moon. But things didn't exactly go according to plan, and the mission is remembered famously as a successful failure. Looks good, Looks good, now, the crew launched without a hitch from NASA's Kennedy Space Center down in Florida, but 56 hours into the mission, after a live television broadcast, things started to go awry. The crew noticed that the cabin pressure was slightly decreasing, and they sent Jack out to go see what was going on. And they all heard an extremely loud bang outside. What that ended up being was an oxygen tank exploding on the service module, taking a piece of the module with it. Now, obviously, this was bad. Both oxygen and power started very quickly depleting, and the astronauts had to work extremely fast with the teams back on the ground to save their lives. So what they ended up figuring out was they shut down the power for the command module because they would need that later for re-entry, and they hopped in the lunar module using it almost like a lifeboat out in space. But this quickly proved to also have its issues because the lunar module was only built for two astronauts who would be going down to the moon. And these were three grown men stuffed into this tiny little capsule. Now, not only were they cramped, but there was only really enough oxygen for two of them. Basically, what ended up happening was there were what is called lithium hydroxide canisters. Canisters that held this chemical that helped to clean carbon dioxide out of the air so that they could breathe well. But those canisters were only meant for two, and quickly carbon dioxide started increasing in the air. So they grabbed the canisters that were on the command module, but another roadblock. The canisters on the command module were, of course, a different shape. So using extreme astronaut ingenuity, duct tape, of course, plastic bags, and even some hoses from spacesuits, they were able to finally configure a DIY ventilation system. And at least for as long as they needed it, they could breathe. So they finally bounded around the far side of the moon and reached the last leg of their journey. Arguably one of the most dangerous legs of the journey, re-entry and splashdown. So they all hopped into the command module, said goodbye to the lunar module that had helped them out so much, re-entered Earth's atmosphere with everyone with their fingers crossed and splashed down in the Pacific Ocean. Amazingly, no one was seriously injured. Everyone was totally fine, and everyone at NASA and around the world breathed a heavy sigh of relief. They accomplished one of the most incredible feats in all of spaceflight history, something that many would have seen as completely impossible. And they lived to tell the tale.